Hello and welcome to my world. I'm of course Fred Kasdan. And as you know, seven nights a week I stream live over on Twitch playing a variety of video games. And at the end of each week, I particularly following my Friday night streams, I end up posting a commentary video here on YouTube, giving my thoughts on something that inspired me uh to uh rant, rave, praise, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Basically my excuse to do an excuse exclusive content for this very tiny YouTube channel that no one watches. Anyway, uh, Friday night of this past week, the week uh, of April 24th, that particular Friday night, we were doing a one-night stream of the Blackwell Epiphany. Over the course of the fi uh, previous four weeks, I played the four previous chapters uh, or the first four games in the series. And straight up, I can tell you this, that Blackwell series is a great five-part series. If, you're, if, you like a game, if you like a series of games where the, where the story builds and references and, and uh, little nuggets easter eggs and and things of that nature we would start seeing where so many things tied together it could be something so insignificant and say a, a teddy bear with a hat and tie uh, that you see in one of the very first scenes well actually not one of the very first scenes but when you first see it in rose's apartment in the blackwell legacy and then you re and then you learn in the fifth and final game that Lauren R R Rosa's aunt got gave her that teddy bear to try and prepare start trying to prepare her for eventually encountering Joey. You realize that's some damn good writing right there, and 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 and, and, and a great example of using callbacks and things of that nature to make you have that great emotional attachment to the characters. Um, that is one thing that this game, uh, that the series does well, and the Blackwell Epiphany is the the peak of that because it is pulling from all the four, first four games with so many references, references to the Deacon, uh, to Gavin, uh, to the Countess, and 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 so many things that it. it, it so when you get towards the end and you realize that the uh that the end is definitely permanent that there is going to be no more in the series even though you kind of wish you were intent uh or you wish there were excuse me but uh it, there is just so much in it and the blackwell epiphany kind of proves that uh, you know that a series of games has to have that it has to have a payoff ending, even that that there has to be some emotional weight to it, or something that makes you feel for the characters, feel that that brings all the emotions or everything. Even if you're not a big, uh, if you're not an emotional person, that it do, that it resonates with you. And Blackwell Epiphany definitely does that. Uh, other examples of other games that did this that. The uh the Walking Dead games from Telltale Games. If you play all those in order, from the first season to the final season, even throwing a uh, little sub season and everything like that, and all those choices building up, you grow the attachment to Clementine and her journey and everything of nature. Same thing. Uh, same thing. Like the ending has to have a payoff of some sort that is satisfying that has weight to it and it's kind of amazing when you look at larger games that uh, fail at that now I, and i think the biggest example of that the more and more i think about it and i find and and i have my own epiphany regarding uh the Mass Effect saga. Uh, everyone knows I'm a big fan of Mass Effect, of the Mass Effect trilogy. I love Mass Effect Andromeda, even though it's its own thing, starting off in a whole sto of the story, um, separate events in its own way. But the biggest problem everyone has to this day with, is with Mass Effect Three. The endings or multiple endings. They don't really have the emotional weight to them. It's why they had the Citadel DLC of the, the, the try and give closure and everything and give some emotional weight and context uh, to everything because it was going to be the last time all those characters were going to be together. But the endings 
themselves fall flat because there is no emotional weight to them. Maybe if there was more, maybe if you had a couple of squad weights, mates with you in the, uh, uh, when you encounter the Star Child on the Citadel and the Crucible and everything in nature, that could have made that better. And I'm not going to, I can believe me, I can do a whole rant on that the more and more I think about it. But that's the biggest failing of the Mass Effect trilogy is the ending of the third game. It ha it does not have any emotional weight to it. And, and here's... Oh, that's available in here with the Blackwell series. You definitely have the emotional weight to it. You have everything that that was perfectly laid out. And granted, I played all the games with the commentary mode on. A couple of which on st <laughs> stream with the commentary mode on. So I hearing all of Dave Gilbert's inside opinions and, and foresight regarding his creative process. So I have that. I have heard his understanding on every uh his point of view some of which i disagree with on what he thought would have worked and what would or what didn't and everything but still he hit the nail on the head that that the ending had the proper context to not just this game but the entire series everything leading up to it and I'm kind of um, hoping when I play, get around to playing other games that have that uh, are in a series where uh, that I've never done before that actually continues because there's not many games that have that have sequels that actually have that. Um, the Borderlands games kind of had that, where every ending was uh, satisfying to various degrees. But again, that story is still ongoing. I have yet to play Borderlands three, so I don't know if that's the "quote unquote" final game in that series, or is it, or if the ending leads is setting up for things bigger and better and beyond. We, I don't know that the Saints Row series, Saints Row four, in many ways was a great. Uh, great ending and then you got the get out of health uh thing that um glorified expansion separate game mini game whatever you want to call it i call it a fun experience uh that gives even more to an ending there and then you got the speculation that there's going to be a saints row f actually there's saints row 5 coming so you're kind of thinking okay that story even though it had an ending multiple endings there is going to be there is an, an, another chapter in the game in the si in that uh, series coming so so it, it it really it really makes me think and appreciate great endings and why this entire thing is all about um endings and things of that nature uh, uh still so with that said uh, right. It's, I think, as a matter of fact, the uh, scene here, you're seeing Rosa and Lauren. That was again another great callback, and everything that just shows how everything just works, tying so many things together to make the player appreciate what they've experienced and everything leading up to it. So. With that said, I think this rant is going to end here. Uh, with, I'm going to try to get these to 10 minutes because uh, I'm shooting from the hip, but we're not going to get that this time around. But, but if you came across uh, this uh, little uh, vlog of mine, uh, le and if you have your thoughts on endings and things of nature, particularly on video game series, uh, leave them in the comments section below. Uh, and as uh, my good friend of mine says, tiny friendship bracelets, walk your hand down and we'll... See you next time, and come over and join me on Twitch. Yo. I'd love to hang out with you guys live each and every night. Uh, in other words, I'll just shut up now and end this here. Bye. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs>